Hi, it's your meme mom slash fortune teller. Is it hot in here or what? Wow, this is such a look. So a while ago I was like, wow, Rachel Max is really cool. I wish we could collab sometime. And then I thought, well, maybe if I'm not going to the US anytime soon and she's not coming to Europe, or is she, but not to Poland definitely, then maybe we could try something online, as in a challenge or something. And then she wrote to me and she was like, hey, let's do a challenge. And I was like, whoa. So yeah, this is how it all went, in case you're wondering. This is how collabs go. It's not someone's manager going like, Hi Caitlin, um, Rachel's really interested in your client. Nope, it's uh, random. It was of course an offer I could not decline, because I had the same offer to make. So we were thinking about a challenge, and again, we kind of had the same idea. We wanted to do a challenge where we do something like historical, a historical outfit, but at the same time to give it like a modern twist or like to intertwine it with pop culture stuff. Yeah, sure. And so we settled on 18th century because it's kind of, it, it does have the wow factor, right? It's kind of like a wow era. And we settled on 18th century and Starbucks and Coca-Cola because those are two brands that are not connected to each other. So it wouldn't make it look like it's an ad. It's not an ad. But at the same time, there's enough like symbolism and interesting factors to it and the color palettes and their, the visuals are kind of easy to recognize that we thought we we might give it a try. So I took Coca-Cola, mainly because I'm a staunch believer that Coca-Cola is better than Pepsi and I visited a Coca-Cola factory when I was, I think, nine. That made a significant difference in my upbringing because I got a free bottle of Coke. And I quite like the visuals as well, like Coca-Cola has a really nice logo and all and it's also quite old, which is obviously a thumbs up, like I like old stuff. So this is also why I prefer Coca-Cola to Pepsi because it's older and it's like the OG unhealthy soda drink. So at first I was like, this is gonna be stunning. I'm gonna make a robe a la Francaise with lots of details and stuff and like Rachel's gonna shit herself. And then I realized that I don't feel like spending that much money. I wanted to print a fabric. At first I was like, oh, I'm gonna put a Coca-Cola logo in it. But then I thought, I'm not too keen on spending that much money on a dress I'm gonna show in a video once and then ditch. So I basically wanted to make something that's gonna be wearable after when I remove all the Coca-Cola stuff. Alas, the Robo La Francaise project proved to be too demanding. Like I've never done one before and there was just too much effort. Like I just didn't feel like doing it. So I changed my mind and I was like, okay, so what's the easiest 18th century dress you can think of? For some reason, my stupid brain went like, Jamie's a Lorraine. Boy, was I wrong. It's not an easy dress to make. It's easy to make if it, if you want it to look crap, but if you actually want it to fit well, turns out there's a lot of stuff you have to do I had no idea about. So construction wise, it turned out to be uh, quite tricky. So I, I printed the fabric. I chose the fabric to be striped. As you probably know, chemise a Lorraine or like robe en chemise are usually white. Like most of the paintings from the era portray ladies in white chemise dresses But there are a couple of fashion plates that feature striped chemise dresses and I was like Yep, that's what I'm gonna do. So I chose a stripey fabric and I, I wanted it to be white and red stripes with the red stripes being quite thin, almost pinstripe, but not quite. <laughs> so obviously this was not easy to find online. Like I searched everywhere and also I wanted a really thin cotton fabric, which obviously is again quite hard to find. So I finally gave up. I just couldn't find the right stripes and I just printed them myself. Like there is this Polish website that prints fabrics, it's quite nice. I just ordered some printed fabric. The problem is that the cotton is a little bit too thick for a chemise a la like it should literally be the thinnest, finest muslin you can think of, whereas my fabric is just really thin cotton. So it does not quite work the same way as a muslin fabric would, but it's the best I could do. There are no thinner stripey fabrics I can put my hands on unless I wanted to hand paint every stripe on a thin muslin fabric, which I think would drive me insane. So. Probably not. Another thing I did is I ordered a huge bag of my miniature plastic Coca-Cola bottles that were labeled as Coca-Cola bottles, but when they came, they had Pepsi labels on them. It was something this size. It's a Coca-Cola bottle that I manually had to rip the label off because there were a hundred of bottles with Pepsi labels on them. I was like, really? This is going great so far. So originally I ordered them because I had an idea for a trim on a robe a la Francaise, but since I'm too lazy, 
I decided to use them in some other way, which I originally thought is gonna be decorating the ruffle around the neck. But as it turned out, Coca-Cola bottles look really odd when you don't know what they are. If you have a huge Coke bottle, it kind of makes sense, but the tiny ones look kind of like weird beetles. Like, I, I sewed them on the dress, and because the dress is white and red, the brown thingies don't look great. It looks like forest animal pooped on my ruffle. Instead, I decided to glue them to a ribbon and trim the bottom part of the skirt with it and that worked much better because originally I glued it to the red trim thingy and I tried to kind of put it in a zigzag shape on the ruffle but because the ruffle is gathered in front it was a huge mess so no to the ruffle decoration so I also struggled a bit because I was trying to find you know those metal coca-cola cap that are kind of iconic for some reason they're so hard to come by on eBay there are only like the collectors items the special ones with signatures or some weird fonts from different countries and I was just trying to find the regular white and red ones and I finally found them when I was doing some shopping for my New Year's Eve party and I had to buy a whole freaking box of coca-cola bottles just to get those caps. So basically what happened was I used those coca-cola bottles as drinks for the party but people threw away all the caps. So I was left with something like 10 coca-cola bottles, I had to drink them in order to get the caps. So once I got all that, I managed to think of a way how to incorporate them in the dress, but then again, I was trying to attach them to the ruffle, it didn't quite work. Like, you have no idea how much a design changes while you're doing it. So instead, I decided to make them look like sort of buttons in front of the dress, which is not quite historically accurate when you think of chemise à la but then again, who cares? It's coca-cola. It didn't exist in 1783. Back to the construction of the dress. So I ordered the fabric and I thought, you know, Nora wa wa pattern is quite straightforward. It's literally one piece and the sleeves, so it's literally the easiest thing you could think of. Alas. As it turned out, the drawstrings have something to do with it looking good or bad and they're quite quite difficult to sew on if you want them to be parallel to each other and be gathered at the right places so at first I thought oh I'm gonna put a drawstring slightly below my waist so when all the fabric is gathered it doesn't look too bulky but as it turned out if it's too low then all of the fabric starts kind of looking weird around here so I was looking for some solutions on how to make it look more fitted than it actually is and even with the belt it didn't quite work like all of the fabric was just like Bleh. so I, I finally gave up and decided to make an under bodice which is still quite unfinished to be honest and then sew some of the gatherings to the bodice so like the back is gathered and then stitched in place so you literally cannot undo it which kind of is contradictory to what chemise à la is like it's supposed to be this loose gathered gown but for the sake of the look I guess so I, I had to do an under bodice and that kind of solved the issue so if you're ever struggling with chemise being too bulky or like looking weird on the side it's best to just stitch it in place and then only the front is a adjustable and that's I think enough in case you know your measurements change or something so then I was like this is not coca-cola enough like I was trying to make it look really coca-cola and it did not look like that it just looked like a striped chemise dress so I decided to paint a coca-cola logo on the belt which actually turned out quite nice the belt is such an important accessory when you're making a chemise à la reine gown so important because otherwise it looks crap but then suddenly you, you add the belt and you're like that makes sense yeah but as you probably noticed there isn't much footage of me sewing the dress and that's because i forgot i think it's the first time i actually was planning to shoot something when i'm sewing it and then i forgot and i will i remember i was like finishing up hem or something and i was like yeah i was supposed to shoot the sewing part wasn't i so well, there is none of that and I don't think you're missing out or an on anything because it's really quite straightforward. It's literally just one piece of fabric gathered in the right places. Like, how difficult can it be? The biggest issue is the fit, like you're trying to make it look good. Then I also thought I need some accessories, I definitely need a hat. I was actually debating on whether to make a hat or a cap but I noticed that hat is probably more iconic when it comes to chemise à la like it's a more obvious choice so I went for a hat I ordered a really probably really offensive sombrero thingy that you can buy in a costume shop but it works really well for 18th century hats because it's obnoxiously huge and it's made of felt 
which is why I used it. And then I also thought I need some feathers, so I ordered some feathers. That's how the hat was made. Jesus, the storytelling in this video. So then Rachel kept updating me on how she's doing and I actually started a lot earlier, I think, but she finished a lot earlier. Like, I still have to pick up the feathers for the hat. That's how late I am. So she's much quicker, but she also had to make all the undergarments because like she didn't have the stays or anything. I had all that ready. I think it's a fun project because it's kind of like how much of a coca-cola can you put in a coca-cola outfit you know what not much <laughs> it's quite difficult because like you wanted to have all those clever thingies that you can you can just look at and be like oh that's coca-cola but at the same time there isn't that much to the visual aspect of it that you can do apart from the color palette and the logo like they don't even have a mascot does coca-cola have a mascot i don't think so so without 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 further ado here's my coca-cola dress and it's all glory. Remember to check out Rachel's project, which is kind of like a mirror project, except it's a Starbucks gown and I'm actually really excited to see it myself because I haven't seen it, but I'm pretty sure it's uh, much better than mine because she's talented and uh, and she's, uh, she's just a creative human being. I'm really happy with this project, it was really exciting and I think I rarely get to improvise that much and it turns out designing a costume that is not supposed to be like 100% based on historical stuff is quite tricky because like you get to decide all the stuff and all of a sudden you need to be creative and like come up with solutions and ideas and I think that's something that I need to practice because it turned out to be quite tricky like having that much freedom and like not just having to copy something so uh, I'm really happy that I got to try it out and yeah and hopefully one day we'll we'll meet in those dresses and get some really cute pictures together because yeah that would be nice oh my god that's his ear so again make sure to check out rachel's video and bye <gasps> my phone just died but it's broken anyway so why would i care